Okay, this is going to be a lesson on the graphing the rational function. Our rational function is this parent function right here, f of x equals 1 over x. So we're inserting, we're inputting x values in the denominator of this function, and that's going to create some fractions. So I've kind of strategically picked some values over here that can give us um, a good perspective on what this graph is going to look like. Notice that 0 is in the middle of my graph, uh, but 0 is going to create a little bit of a problem for us in the denominator of this equation. And let me tell you what, I'm, what I mean. So if I wanted to substitute and find out what the y value is when x is 0, this is what it would look like. Now a lot of you have probably recognized that that's a problem immediately because we can't divide by 0 in the sense that if I ask you to make groups of zero of something, you couldn't do that because the idea of zero is that there's nothing there, but the idea of groups or dividing by something and making groups is that you need multiple items from a larger set. So those two concepts work against each other and don't allow them to happen. So we can't divide by zero because we can't make groups of zero. So this is actually undefined in our real number system, we actually don't have the ability to divide by zero. So we will not have a y value here. So we're going to put undefined in our chart for our x and y values. However, when we do go back in and we start to plug in some of these other x values, like um, negative 2, for instance, 1 divided by negative 2 is simply that, negative 1 half. Or you can even think about it in terms of a decimal as negative 0.5. And so right here I'll have negative 1 half or negative 0.5. And so when I go to graph that left 2 and then down a half, I'm somewhere like this. Okay? Uh, next I'm going to try to substitute in negative 1. And so 1 divided by negative 1 is just negative 1. So when I go to graph that, that's left 1, down 1, and this will be my graph here. Okay? Then I chose this negative 1 half because I understand when I divide by fractions, it's the same as multiplying. So I'm actually going to get an interesting result here. So when I divide by negative 1 half, the result is negative 2. You can check that on your calculator. You can multiply by the reciprocal, but the result would be negative 2. So if I go left halfway, but then I end up going down two full units, my graph is going to have a y value there at negative 2 for when x is equal to negative 1 half. So you can almost start to see a little bit of a trend here, but if you're not, we'll keep plugging some values in. So if I plug in a positive 1 half, that result is positive 2. So right 1 half up 2 is going to have me with a value there. If I plug in 1, I'll get 1. So right 1 up 1. And you start to see some symmetry in our values. And if I plug in a 2, I'll get 1 half or 0.5. And that's going to take me right about here. All right, and what you can start to see is these curves occurring. So real quick, what I want to do is I want to extend this table, and I want to try negative 3 and positive 3 just to give us even more of a picture to look at. So if I plug in negative 3, I'll get negative 1 third or negative 0.333 repeating, and that's going to be closer to the x-axis here. Forgive my computer. Here, all right, and then if I plug in a positive 3, I'll get a positive one third, and that again is going to be close to the x axis as I move to the right. So, one of the things that you can start to see trending is these graphs getting really close to both of these axes without actually touching. And now we finally arrived at one of our functions that have what we call an asymptote. So the two axes here and here 
are acting as what we call asymptotes. And these are, we talked about this earlier in the unit, these are those imaginary lines, either vertical or horizontal, that our graph approaches, gets really infinitely close to without actually ever touching. So you can see how our graph approaches these both axes and turn and walk right along them as if it's a fence that they can't touch or cross. And so these two act like fences for our function, and that's why we call them asymptotes. So we have asymptotes right now at x equals 0, that's my y-axis, and y equals 0, that's my x-axis. So from here, we're going to keep in mind that it looks like our graph has two different parts because the x at 0 is undefined, and we have these two asymptotes that are acting like fences that won't allow us to cross and reconnect to the other portion of the graph. Um, so I'm looking at the domain here, and it seems with this arrow pointing to my left, it looks like all of these x values seem to be pretty good, but then as I come closer and closer to the origin, and I get really close to zero, I don't ever actually get to zero. So my domain appears to be all these x values that are smaller than x, and as I get past the, the zero, all these x values that are bigger than zero. So I seem to be good if I'm smaller than zero or bigger than zero. I just seem to have a problem right here at zero. So when I write our domain, we're going to kind of include the two portions of that. So negative infinity up to zero and then zero to positive infinity. Notice I'm using all these parentheses because I'm not actually touching those values. My range is going to be very similar in that I never actually touch zero on the x-axis, or I never actually have a y value of zero. So negative infinity up to that zero seemed to be okay. And after that zero up to positive infinity seemed to be okay. But I can't actually touch zero. All right, I don't have any x-intercepts because I don't actually touch the x-axis. And I don't have any y-intercepts because I don't actually touch the y-axis. I don't have a maximum or a minimum value, as you see, that I continue to go up. I continue to go down uh, without any boundaries. In behavior. Uh, in behavior, remember, that's not here in the middle where it seems that my asymptotes are keeping me from reconnecting. It's actually way out near infinity. So as the x values approach negative infinity, that's way out to the left, my y values are going up, and they're getting closer and closer and closer to this fence that's the x-axis so that's a y value approaching never actually getting there but approaching zero so they'll never actually cross the x-axis even though i get closer and closer and closer and i walk that line very close to the x-axis i never actually get there but i'm heading toward a y value of zero and as my x values are increasing like they're heading toward positive infinity i'm going to the right go to the right my y values are going down also toward this x-axis or a y value of 0. This function is symmetrical about the origin. As you can see, I can flip diagonally here and get the same thing, so we would refer to that as an odd function. But I do have this gap where I'm not connected, so that's going to make this be a discontinuous function. So here you might want to pause your screen and take a look at all of the information about our parent function for this rational function. I did want to finish the video with doing an example with a couple of transformations. So we do have a reflection uh, over the x-axis, and we are going to have to translate down one unit according to these two changes that are here. So what I first want to do is get my parent function onto the graph, and then I'm going to move those six points function six points that I'm going to use. Remember, there's an infinite number of points on this function, but I'm just going to use these six. Notice that I didn't actually draw the curve in here because I do want to make it as clear as possible for you to be able to move these points. Okay, so we are going to reflect over the x-axis and we're going to translate down one. So my current y value for this point is down to negative one half. And that means with a reflection over the x-axis, its new y value is going to be positive one-half. So that's going to be right about here. 
and then I'm going to go down one unit. So it's actually going to land me right back onto the point that I'm on right now. Uh, with this point, I'm at a Y value. So I'm actually just going to put a green around that. Uh, I'm at a Y value of negative one. So I flip the sign. I'm up to positive one. And then I move down one unit. It's going to put me on the X axis. I'm at a Y value of negative two. So my new Y value will be positive two. And then I'm going to move down one unit. And so that right there is going to be the new version of this curve. Now next, I'm going to move these points here. I'm at a Y value of positive 2, so that's going to take me to negative 2. And then I move down one unit. It's going to be here. I'm at a Y value of 1, so that's going to take me to negative 1. And then down one unit is going to put me here. And then I'm at a Y value of 1 half, so Flip that to negative one half, and then down one unit would be negative one and a half, which is right about here. So these are the two the two new sets of three points for my curve. Another thing that I want to really point out is zero zero is the center of the parent function. Well, with the transformation moving down one, that's going to take the center of my that's going to take the center of of my new function down one unit as well. So instead of being zero, zero as the center, it's going to be zero, negative one. So my X axis will continue to be the vertical asymptote here where I never actually cross. But instead of the, I'm sorry, the, that was the Y axis. Now the, instead of the X axis being the horizontal asymptote, moving down one is going to make X equals negative one now my horizontal asymptote and you can see when I go ahead and draw this in I stay really close to both of these acts of uh, both of these asymptotes but I never actually touch or cross either and that's how you graph your transformations for the rational function all right real quick let's talk about the domain and range Domain seems to be everything works for X values except for zero. So negative infinity up to zero and then zero to positive infinity. Again, notice that we're not using brackets because we don't actually ever touch zero. My range seems to be everything good except for when, and I've got a small error here. Let me fix this. It's Y equals negative one. Forgive me for that. So my Y values can't be negative one. So my range seemed to be fine from negative infinity up to negative 1, and then from negative 1 up to positive infinity. We do have two asymptotes this time. We've got the, we've got the y equals negative 1 for our horizontal asymptote, and we still have the x equals 0 y-axis as our vertical asymptote. Uh, we never, we, we don't, this time actually we have an x-intercept, it's right here. We do cross the x-axis right there at negative 1, 0. We just have that one there. We never actually ever touch the y-intercept, so we don't have a y-intercept. We don't have a maximum or a minimum value as I continue to increase and de decrease without bounds. In behavior, as, as x approaches negative infinity, what are my y's doing? Well, as x approaches negative infinity, that means down and to the left, my curve right here is getting really close to negative 1. As x is approaching positive infinity, what are my y values doing? So that's way out to the right. Where are my y values heading? This is heading up to negative 1. I do have a gap here in the middle where I'm not connected, so that makes for a discontinuous function. So again, notice that I use the parent function points to start with, and then I move those to get what my new curve would be according to these transformations.